That of Peter Collins in the 1956 Italian Grand Prix was probably the most human act in the history of Formula 1, obviously taking into consideration only the category of sporting merits. Peter Collins was very young for the time. When he joined Ferrari in 1956, his teammate and world champion Fangio was 45, while he was only 24. Collins had made a name for himself outside of Formula 1, with countless victories. After a few appearances in the category then, he moved to Ferrari, as mentioned, and 1956 was a spectacular year. The season is marked by the launch of Ferrari of Fangio and Collins, plus the two Maseratis of Sterling Moss and Jean Berra. Each race will see at least two of them finish on the podium. Clearly, Collins, as well as all the other Ferrari drivers, such as Musso, De Portago, Castellotti and Gendebien, are at service of the reigning world champion. Juan Manuel Fangio is the absolute number one of the team, having won three of the last five championships. In Monaco, in fact, Collins gave up the car to Fangio after the Argentine hit the barriers. At the time, it was a common procedure, and they would split the points. Collins then returns to the pit, gets out of the car, and diligently hands it over to him. In the end, Fangio recovers up to second place, and therefore they will take three points each. In the head of the Argentine champion, however, something was going wrong. The master, as he was nicknamed, feared that Enzo Ferrari didn't support him, and in fact, in the following two races, Collins won a Spa and Reims. Excluding the Indianapolis 500, four races had gone by, and only three remained. Collins is first in the standings with 19 points, ahead of Berra and Fangio with 13, while Moss follows at 12. In Great Britain at Silverstone, Fangio returns to victory, while Collins is second with the Portago's car, and the four takes home half the points. At the Nürburgring, however, Collins breaks out while he's second, and we arrive at the Monza race with the following situation. Fangio is first with 30 points, Collins second with 22. With a win, which at the time was worth 8 points, and a retirement by Fangio, Collins would be world champion. Everything is decided in Monza, where Ferrari fielded five cars. The Parabolica stressed the tyres a lot, and one by one, both Castellotti and Fangio, the championship leader, are eliminated. According to the agreement, had Fangio retired, Ferrari would have had to call in the other drivers to give up their car. De Portago, however, had retired out of the third lap. So did Castellotti, as mentioned. Everything was left into the hands of Musso who refused, wanted to fight for victory in his own GP. Fangio sat in the garage resigned. He thought he had lost the world championship. But suddenly everything changed. Collins, from second place, returned to the pit lane to change his tyres. He noticed the sad Fangio sitting on the edge of the lane. He doesn't think about it twice. He leaves the car, saying, Master, I'm still young and I will have time to win a title. Maybe you don't. Take my car and win. Race leader Moss, who suffers from fuel problems, would surely have given way to Collins had the break continued. In doing so, Collins gave up the title of world champion, making his human goodness prevail. Fangio finished second in Collins' car, just six seconds behind leader Moss. It is a wonderful gesture which has no equal in the sport. A 24-year-old boy who gives up the world championship to the most admired driver of the time, Juan Manuel Fangio. It is a sign of respect and generosity. Try to imagine in 2014 a Lewis Hamilton who, ahead of the problems of Nico Rosberg in Abu Dhabi, gives him his car, letting him be world champion. Two teammates who, fighting in the last race, would prefer to let the other win as a sign of respect. Fangio say thank you to Collins, hugs him, and is proved. The Briton will minimise. He deserved it. At 45, he would have had few other chances to be world champion. I'm 24, and I have my whole career ahead of me. (music) 
never challenge fate, and unfortunately for him, his gesture will not be rewarded with sporting merit. Collins will continue to shine outside of Formula 1, but precisely in this competition, in 1957, only two podiums arrived for him. In 1958, Collins returned to fighting for the championship alongside his teammate Mike Hawthorn, of whom he's a great friend. The two even decided to split the prizes in half, whatever the result and regardless of who obtained it. Collins finished third in Monaco, but had to retire in Argentina, Holland and Belgium. When it doesn't break, Ferrari is a great car, and as soon as Collins wins his home GP at Silverstone, both him and his teammate are fighting for the championship. On August the 3rd, 1958, the race at the Nürburgring Nordschleife takes place, and Collins follows Hawthorne in the lead. From behind, however, comes Tony Brooks' lightning-fast bandwall. The Briton recovers and passes the leading duo. In an attempt to battle him, Collins loses control of the car and goes off track. The car takes off, it would be a horrible accident, and there would be no hope for Collins. At just 26, Formula 1 loses its most magnanimous man. Mike Hawthorne, his great friend, will win the World Championship. The loss of Collins hit him so hard that he decided to retire from racing. Sometime later, he will also end up in a car accident. Collins was an example of the goodness of Formula 1 drivers in the 1950s. They were friends, they respected each other. They knew the risks involved and the courage it took while racing. Collins will go down in history forever as the one who gave away a world championship out of respect and admiration for his teammate. Given the age, the potential and all the successes outside of Formula 1, motorsport has lost a great driver, but also a great person, Peter Collins, the gentleman.